Hey guys, John Campy here for Collider Video, and this is my quick review of the brand new John Wick 2. Now, John Wick 2 kind of picks up very closely to where the original John Wick left off. We still find John Wick kind of lamenting the loss of his wife, starting his grieving process, and kind of in the search for some form of catharsis to move on with his life, although he's not quite there yet. Now, one of the things that I loved about the original John Wick movie was the whole mythology they set up around the Continental, the hotel, this underworld and the rules and regulations that govern it. As we move into John Wick 2, the setup of the movie that we see in the first act starts like this. It expands that mythology. When one of the lords of the underworld comes to John Wick with something called a marker that John Wick had put his blood seal on a few years before. Apparently, this crime lord is one of the guys that helped John Wick get out of the life in the first place. But if you hold one of these blood-soaked markers, that means you can bring it to somebody and they have to give you whatever favor they ask for. And now he's brought back that John Wick marker to give to John Wick to call him back into action, and that's where everything starts off. Now, when you're talking about John Wick, one of the first things you want to know is, how is the action? That's what blew us all the way about the first one. A little while ago, we heard the director say that the action is actually twice as big as it was in the first John Wick, and you know what? He wasn't lying. I completely lost count of the body count in this movie. I mean, he's killing people left and right. He's using everything you can possibly imagine to kill people. And one of the cool things is, as he's going into these big action sequences, you see that John Wick actually has a fighting pattern. And you start to recognize his pattern. And he's reusing some moves that he uses in previous fights. And that's actually a really good thing because it kind of, in a weird way, makes John Wick feel more real in all the action that's going on. And speaking of the Continental, Ian McShane does return in his role and we get a whole lot more of the Continental. I remember saying after the first John Wick that I could watch an entire Continental spin-off movie and it kind of feels a little bit like that's what John Wick 2 is to a small degree. The Continental isn't just in the United States, it's also all over the world and we get to see little pictures of that as well. Now much like in the original John Wick, Wick isn't the only assassin badass out there. There's other assassins along the way who sometimes he works with and sometimes he comes into conflict with. Common is one of those guys he comes into conflict with and they have several really cool action sequences together that are actually some of the highlights of the film for me. Look, overall, is this as good of an overall movie as the first John Wick was? I don't think so. I think overall, when you talk about the story and the mythology and the layers and all that kind of stuff, and getting introduced to the boogeyman, I think the first John Wick might be an overall better film experience. But on pure action and fun, they really ramped it up. I had a great time watching this movie. Maybe not quite as good as the first John Wick, but I don't think there's any way. If you enjoy action, a lot of high intensity in your action films, there's no way you're not going to walk out of this movie with at least a smile on your face. I cannot recommend it highly enough, especially if you're an action fan. Well, have you had a chance to see John Wick 2 yet? If so, make sure you jump into the comments section and leave your thoughts. What did you think of the movie? Thanks a lot for joining us. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay up to date on all the new stuff that we got coming on Collider Video every single day. I'm John Campia. Thanks for joining me.